Hey guys, back again with another Excel demo. I wanted to talk about how to use Excel to do hypothesis testing. So what I've done is I've taken an example from the book. This is uh, chapter 9, number 19, page 341. Sets up a very basic hypothesis test here. So written this down, our null hypothesis is that mu, the true population mean of whatever it is we're measuring, is less than or equal to 1,000. And the alternative hypothesis is that mu is, in fact, greater than 1,000. So the question this is setting up is, is, does our data present overwhelming enough evidence that the true population mean is actually greater than the 1,000 that we've sort of assumed? And kind of like in jury trials, the way to do these is that uh, the null hypothesis is sort of considered innocent until proven guilty. In other words, we have to present overwhelming evidence for the alternative hypothesis. And the way we do that is we say, okay, I'll assume the null hypothesis is true. I'll assume this mean is, is in fact a thousand. And then I'll show you that the evidence I got would be so unlikely that therefore that's, that it's not actually a thousand. So what we're going to compute now is what is the probability that if the mean actually were a thousand that I would get data like I did? And then we'll compare that probability to some predetermined threshold, which is called alpha, and see if we're actually more or less likely than that alpha threshold. So before we worry about alpha, we're going to actually compute what the probability of getting numbers like we did. So I've set up the data that they give us. So we're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true and that the mean is, in fact, 1,000. And then we said, OK, we collected a sample of 64. So that's our n and we computed an average of 1020. And then we happen to know that in this population, we have a population standard deviation of 80. So notice I've written this as sigma because it's a population standard deviation. Since we know sigma, we are allowed to use z statistics. In other words, we're allowed to use normal curve distribution instead of t curve distributions. So with that in mind, I'm going to compute the p-value for this experiment. And I'm actually, I'm going to do this in two steps. And the reason I'm going to do two steps here is, if you remember when we first started looking at how Excel does normal curve calculations, it always does cumulative from the left. So that means it essentially is always giving us a lower p-value. What's the probability of getting this value or less? Now, because our alternative hypothesis is getting this value or more, we're going to have to do 1 minus what we get. So I'll show you how that works. So we're going to start with, let's see what Excel has to say about the normal curve here. So I'm going to go into my statistical formula menu here. And uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. So I've got norm dist. And I don't have a standard normal curve, so I'm going to just use an arbitrary normal curve. And let's see the x. So it's asking, OK, the x, what did we actually get? That was 1020. And then the mean. This is the population mean, so this is going to be um, what the null hypothesis says the mean is. In other words, 1,000. Let me move this over so you can see it. Standard deviation. Now, remember, the standard deviation for a sample is sigma, but then we're going to divide by the square root of n. So that's the sample standard. That's Sorry, that's the standard deviation of the average because we're dividing by the square root of n. And then cumulative, yes, we always want cumulative, so there you go. So we got a lower p-value of 0.97725. So let's try and understand what Excel is telling us. Excel is saying, okay, if the mean is really 1,000, then the odds that you are going to get an x-bar, an average of size 1020 or less, is 0.97725. But since we have an alternative hypothesis that's looking for an upper, a mu greater than 1,000, we actually want to know what is the probability of picking an x-bar like this, this big or greater. What's the probability that we would have gotten an x-bar of 1020 or more? So Excel, as always, returns the value to the left. If we want the value to the right, then we just have to do 1 minus that. What's left over? So we've got more than 97% to the left, so we just need to ask it, okay, what's the other stuff? What's the stuff to the right? 
and there it is. It's 0 0.02275. So this then is the actual p-value for our test, 0 0.02275. Again, because it's a one-sided test and it's an upper test, we want to know above. So we had to do 1 minus what Excel gave us. So what does that tell us? Well, what that tells us is if the null hypothesis is right and the average is really 1,000 or less, then the odds that we would have gotten a sample average of 1020 or more, that high or higher, is actually 0 0.02275. So in other words, just a little bit more than 2% likely. In other words, it's very unlikely. So this is evidence against this null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis was true, the odds that we would have gotten an average this big out of our sample is a little over 2%. So is that, that's very unlikely. How unlikely is it? Well, this is why we have an alpha. So part B says, um, for a significance level of 0.05, should you reject the null hypothesis? So the significance level is something you determine before you do the test. And it's usually 0.05 unless it's matters of life and death, in which case it's 0.01. So that's certainly something for you guys to think about when you're doing your project is, if I'm going to be testing a hypothesis, what sort of significance level am I after? So in this case, they say 0.05. And what they mean is, if something happens and it's so unusual that it causes us to reject the null hypothesis, what does so unusual mean in this case? And what they're saying is, well, something that's 5% likely or less that's going to be deemed too unusual, too weird. And that'll be big enough evidence that, in fact, the null hypothesis is wrong. So all you need to do when you get to this point is take the p-value you calculated in point A and compare it to alpha. If the p-value is less than alpha, then that means, yes, your result was unlikely enough, so unlikely, that we actually do reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, for part B, we say, Yes, we reject the null hypothesis because the p-val is less than the alpha. Our 0 0.02275 was less than our 0 0.05. In other words, our data was weird enough that the null hypothesis is probably wrong. Again, we can't 100% prove that it's wrong, just like we can't find 100% confidence interval. But this is significant evidence that the null hypothesis is actually wrong. So this was a case of testing hypotheses where we now reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. And essentially, all your homework this week just does this over and over again, Some, sometimes in somewhat different uh, different. Um, test statistic environments. You might have to use t statistics. You might be evaluating proportions. You might be comparing two populations. But the basic technique is the same. You take the null hypothesis as true, figure out what are the odds that you would get the statistic that you did, and that, what are the odds that you would get the statistic? That's our p-value. And then you compare that p-value with your alpha, your alpha being sort of a threshold for what's going to be considered too weird to be acceptable. If your p-value is less than your alpha, then you reject the null hypothesis. If what didn't turn out in this case, but what might turn out in a different case, if you get a p-value of 0.06 or 0.11, something more than alpha, then your evidence is not significant. Your evidence isn't enough to reject the null hypothesis, and therefore you keep the null hypothesis. So, um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense, and I'll talk to you guys a little later. Thanks.